It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Philips BDM 4350UC. This is a, a video review of sorts. It isn't designed to replace the written reviews that I do. Um, I like to do very detailed written reviews with lots of technical depth and analysis. This isn't going to be like that. This is really just a sort of a summary review to complement the written reviews. So I definitely recommend checking out the written review. There's a link to that in the description of the video. Um, but for those that want to sort of see the monitor in action and hear a little bit about uh, its key features, then this might be for you. The first thing you notice when you first turn the monitor on is most likely the large screen size. It's 42.51 inches, so just shy of 43 inches. You'll also notice that it has a glossy screen surface. It's got a haze value, that's um, a measure of how um, how heavily it'll diffuse light of about three to four percent, which is the same as the older BDM 4065UC. Uh, now, of course, everyone knows the downside to glossy screens. Yes, you do get some reflections, especially in brighter lighting environments. The room I'm in at the moment is actually fairly bright. It's a nice sunny day outside. Um, I've got pretty big window to my right of the, to the right of me the curtains are closed a little bit for half of that window but this it's it's fairly bright so you will be able to see a bit of reflection especially on darker areas of the image for lighter areas of the image the light from the monitor itself can outcompete that reflection quite nicely depending on the brightness i've got my monitor set to a brightness of about 160 candelas per meter squared so it's uh, it's not not too bright it's um, quite comfortable brightness for this kind of lighting. But the glossy screen also brings some advantages. A matte screen diffuses light, that's how it gets its anti-glare properties, so ambient light striking the screen is diffused. So it you don't get the kind of sharp reflections that you might get on the, a glossy screen. However, the screen surface works both ways, so light emitted from the monitor undergoes exactly the same diffusion process. It can give, particularly for the higher haze value matte screen surfaces, it can give a, a pretty grainy look to the image. It's sort of like looking at the image through a slightly dirty window on some models. It's just not really a very nice uh, thing. And it's you don't get the same sort of clarity and sharpness potential that you do, nor the same vibrancy potential as you do on a glossy screen. Now, the panel type used on this monitor is IPS type. It isn't technically IPS because that's a trademark from LG Display at the moment. So other manufacturers such as TP Vision, who own Philips and AOC and some other monitor manufacturers, they actually developed this panel in-house, the TP Vision panel, and it's IPS type. So it's characteristically an IPS display, but it can't just be called IPS thanks to trademarks. So, it's obviously very different to the VA panel used on the older 4065UC. It doesn't have the same kind of really strong static contrast. Rather than 5000 to 1, I actually measured slightly higher than 5000 to 1 in my review of the older model. Um, it's Well, they specify 1200 to 1 and I actually measured between 700 and 800 to 1. So, it doesn't have particularly strong contrast. But, especially in a light, uh, a light room like this, a fairly well lit room, it, the perceived contrast is actually very good and it's a lot better than you might expect from the figures. So, it helps dark elements such as the, the, the black and the browns on the butterfly wing. They look nice and deep in this, in this kind of lighting. The nice dark greens there, it all looks really deep. Uh, and the brighter colours, because of the glossy screen surface, they, they pop out quite nicely. And I was actually quite surprised when I measured the, the colour gamut of this monitor because it sits very closely to sRGB. It doesn't extend much beyond this as many monitors with this kind of resolution do. The resolution of this screen is 3840 by 2160 UHD, ultra high definition. Some people would call it 4K. It's, it's a good resolution for this size of screen. Um, you can see the size of the desktop icons there. 
they're pretty, they're, they're pretty small, um, but actually all the text and the UI elements, it's all perfectly readable in my opinion without scaling. It's actually slightly, slightly larger in that sense that the pixel density is slightly uh, looser than on a 27 inch WQHD or 2560 by 1440 screen. It's similar to a 21.5 inch full HD screen. So really, it's um, as long as you've got decent eyesight or you've got your eyesight corrected properly, you shouldn't really have any issues not using any scaling at all and uh, using the monitor, which is quite a nice, a nice bonus, especially when compared to some of the smaller UHD screens. Now, obviously, one of the, the key advantages to having this much desktop space is the multitasking capabilities. So you can see here, on the left side, I've got a Word document open. It's actually the draft of the written review for this monitor. On the right side, I've got this lovely website here, which is my website, pcmonitors.info. And you can see that the the text size is, it's, it's well, it's, uh, I don't know how to look in the video, to be honest, but it's, it's a good readable size. You get plenty of content on the screen, and, you know, I'd quite happily be able to edit away at this document and also procrastinate by looking at a website on the other side of the screen. As I mentioned in the OSD video, the on-screen display video, this monitor also has uh, quite good picture-in-picture and picture-by-picture -picture -picture capabilities. You could actually have multiple sources, up to four sources connected to the monitor um, and have content from them simultaneously displayed, which can make good use of such a large, high-resolution screen. Now, one particular aspect of the, the screen which I, I like, and something that is preferable to the older VA panel used on the older model, is that the colours are very consistent. Um, it's, it's not going to be obvious from the video. Something you have to be aware of is the video you're seeing doesn't represent what I'm actually seeing as I'm using the monitor. It shows my camera's view of the monitor, and also your own monitor's view of the monitor. So it's not really representing what you can see firsthand using the monitor. And that's one of the reasons I was actually reluctant to do video reviews of this type, because they can be a bit misleading because of that. But um, I'm going to fire up some games and talk a bit more about some of the sort of key attributes of the panel type and the, the monitor itself. I've just fired up Battlefield 4 and everyone's favourite multiplayer map on that, or not. Operation Metro 2014. This will be a good, a good um, sort of demonstration of the contrast of the monitor. And again, you're not going to be able to see what I see firsthand, but I will be able to discuss some of the sort of key pros and cons of the monitor on this. Now, this is quite a good, a good test for contrast. It has lots of good dark shaded areas and also lots of nice contrasting bright shades as well. And on this monitor, those bright shades, they really do stand out nicely. They have a nice smooth look to it because of the screen surface, and because of the direct emission of light, it sort of just pops out of the screen nicely. The darker areas, I've actually, I've actually cut out the light from this room a bit. I've, I've closed the curtains, basically, so um, I'll be able to hopefully show you a few things here. Now, in a, in a sort of better lit environment, such as what I was uh, sitting in before when I had the curtains open, it was quite bright outside, the, the perceived contrast is actually really good. Um, I mean, you can't really see the, the weaknesses, is, is more to the point, but um, you may be able to see there's obviously something sort of a hazy look down here, um, hazy look down there. That's IPS glow, it is unavoidable on an IPS panel of this size and without a, an ATW polarizer or anything like that. I don't want to get into these uh, debate about the polarizers at the moment. Um, that'll take far too long and uh, yes, I, I know that it would be nice to have glow-free panels, but this isn't one of them and, you know, it's very common to have IPS glow. Obviously the VA panel didn't have that issue and the depth of the, the, the black or the, the darker colours the darker shades was actually better than it is on this model. But 
the, the overall level of detail is still pretty good. Um, again, you won't be able to see this on the video, and you can actually see, although this um, room is fairly dim, you can still see reflection, because this is dark content, there's not light from the monitor competing with it. But um, I have to say that when I actually use this and I'm just playing the game, I really don't have a problem with that. It, it's, it's quite a subjective thing. Some people, you know, they might find it slightly bothersome. I don't. I really don't mind. I much prefer it to a hazy screen surface. So, basically, yes, yeah, static contrast. It's not wonderful on this monitor, but the perceived contrast is actually pretty good. And although the screen is very large and there is a bit of IPS glow, may not come out properly on the video, um, it's, it, again, it's just not too bad. And my sample had good backlight uniformity aside from that in terms of displaying without uh, obvious backlight bleed, which is a nice thing as well. So I'm now going to fire up a different game um, and a more colourful game to talk a bit about the colours. I'm now on Dirt Rally and I'm going to be completely upfront with you. I'm not very good at this game uh, at the best of times. I'm certainly not good at this game when I'm holding a camera. but. I do find it's a good test for colour reproduction. It has a lot of nice bright colours for the, um, the the paint jobs of the cars and it has lots of variety, it has a lot of different natural colours within the environments and it's just, it's just a nice test and I've used a lot of monitors um, running this game and previous dirt games. I'm, I mean even when you're just in the menu system the you can see that the uh, the monitor has good vibrancy potential and again it probably won't come across on the video but um, things don't look stupidly oversaturated or anything like that that's not why they're vibrant it's just that the the direct emission of the light from the screen surface and the decent color gamut it's uh, yeah makes for some nice nice attractive vivid colors but accurately represented colors so I'm going to choose a nice blue Subaru I'm not going to pick overcast because that uh, isn't very nice. It's just not very nice. You know, it's a nice sunny day outside. I don't want to be stuck in here looking at overcast uh, computer games. Oh well, seems to have selected it for me. Never mind. So, one real strength of this is the colour consistency, and by that I mean a shade represented in the centre of the screen appears very much the same if it's at the there or there, the bottom of the screen. With especially with the large VA panel, um, the previous version of this monitor, if you if you observe the sort of fairly deep green of some of these trees, it would look quite nice further up the screen. But then towards the bottom, it became far less saturated, and towards the edges of the screen as well. And this is something I explore in the written review in quite a lot of detail. But on this, um, you know, the, the, the consistency is not perfect. It is a big screen and still IPS type panels aren't perfect, but it is a lot better. And it also allows there to be a, a good variety of distinct shades, which vary just slightly from neighbouring shades. So there are actually quite, there's quite a variety of greens shown on the scene at the moment. Um, you know, they're not all lush greens. There's not just one type of green. There are lots of more muted pastel shades. Um, well, actually, there, there would be in uh, if it wasn't overcast. You can't really see them so much at the moment. But the monitor does display these in a very distinctive way, which is very nice. And again, you've got the nice vibrant colours. So the, the, the environments, they look natural. The, the paint jobs look really nice and uh, eye-catching. You know, that blue and the highlighter yellow. It's, it's very eye-catching indeed, but still looks as it's intended. So, I'm not going to embarrass myself anymore by um, continuing to play this game. I'll probably just crash and uh, get really frustrated. So I'll, uh, I'll do something else and continue to talk about the monitor. Now, unsurprisingly, I have one of my favourite websites for testing monitor responsiveness. Um, obviously I do lots of subjective testing in games, but for sort of objective analysis I find TestUFO, that's testufo.com, a Blurbuster's sort of sub-site, really useful. Now, 
One issue with this monitor that was highlighted quite in quite an obvious way by this test is that it does skip a frame or, or it judders once every two and a half seconds or so. Now, this is not as bad as it sounds actually. Obviously, if you're looking at these UFOs scrolling across the screen, I can see them appear to sort of jump or judder once every two and a half seconds because a frame is, is missed out. Now, this juddering behavior actually occurs regardless of the refresh rate. I've got it set to 60 hertz, which is the native resolution. If you've got it set to any other refresh rate, it, it still occurs. And actually, it can be a lot more frequent at some other refresh rates. Um, yes, this test does highlight the juddering. But as I point out in the review, I had a, had a, a nice chat with the Philips product manager. And, you know, they, their team's done a lot of testing on this as well. And it's just not something that's really going to be obvious to users when you just use the monitor normally. Um, I mean, I've got a really sensitive eye, so I can, I can see it when I play games. I know the difference between a solid 60 uh, frames a second, completely smooth, versus, you know, slight hitching, juddering, stuttering, whatever. But, again, it's not as bad as what you'd see if the frame rate drops at all below that 60 frames a second anyway. Um, it, it's not something most people will, will notice. And I've had a discussion on the Overclockers forum, various other sites, and users do see it in this test, but they don't actually notice it during normal use. So basically, don't worry about that. Another thing I wouldn't worry about, the specified response times on this monitor. There is a pixel overdrive feature called smart response. It's set to off by default, but I've got it set to fast, which as I explore in the written review is um, what I consider optimal. You do get a very small amount of overshoot or inverse ghosting when you use that setting, but it's, it's really faint. It doesn't catch the eye and it's just, again, it's not something most users will even notice, let alone have a problem with. Um, and there is, a, you know, there is a little bit of trailing beyond what you'd ideally see, but if you read the written review in our article on monitor responsiveness, you'll note that it's actually the movement of our eyes um, as we track motion on the screen that causes the majority of, of blur, or perceived blur that you'll see. The pixel responses, obviously they, they're a factor, and depending on the monitor they might be a, a less or more significant factor. Um, but, you know, if this monitor had 0.1 millisecond response time, even if it was an OLED, if it was still 60 hertz sample and hold display like this, you'd still get a fairly similar amount of blur overall. So I'm not going to say too much more about that. Basically, the responsiveness is pretty well tuned, and as far as 60 hertz monitors goes, this is fine, in my opinion. Um, input lag... Again, I measured that in the review. I think it was about 27 milliseconds. It's um, now it's moderately high. It, in, it indicates that there's a signal delay which could bother some users or will bother some users. But, you know, other people, I could tell them that it had one millisecond of input lag. They'd believe me. They're just not everyone is sensitive to that. And because it's a 60 hertz monitor, it's never going to feel incredibly... Um, you know, fluid. You're never going to feel that sort of connected feeling that you get with a higher refresh rate display anyway. So I'm just going to turn the monitor off and uh, show you the, the back of the monitor now, just before I sort of wrap this up. So this is the rear of the monitor. In the centre there, you can see 200 by 200 millimeter VESA holes, or VESO, however you want to pronounce it. They can be used to connect the monitor to an alternative compatible stand or mounting solution. The included stand is basically just these little metal feet here that attach to the bottom of the monitor. They don't afford you any ergonomic freedom at all. You can't even tilt the screen with those. There's an AC power input here, which means that the monitor has an internal power converter. It doesn't have an external power brick. There's the OSD, on-screen display, um, controller there, a little joystick. There's also a zero watt power switch if you want to cut off the power to the monitor completely. There are stereo 7 watt integrated speakers as well, which give you a fairly 
<sighs> not exactly high quality sound output, but fairly loud and as far as integrated speakers go, they're not bad. And there are the ports of the monitor. And these include two HDMI 2.0 ports, which support the full 3840 by 2160 UHD resolution at 60 Hz. If you're using an older revision of HDMI on the graphics card, then it will be limited to 30 Hz at the native resolution. There are two DisplayPort 1.2 inputs, and again these support 60 Hz at the native resolution, um, whereas older revisions of DisplayPort, such as 1.1, will only support 30 Hz at the native resolution. There's also a VGA port, 3.5mm audio input, 3.5mm headphone jack, and four USB 3 downstream ports plus upstream. And you see this one here has a little lightning icon which means it supports fast charging for any connected devices there. So the Philips BDM 4350UC. Um, yep, yeah, it's a nice big screen. It has nice colour performance, decent contrast, decent responsiveness. Um, the screen size itself, um, I sit about uh, 70 to 80 centimetres away from the screen and I actually quite like it. Um, it did take me a little bit of adjusting to get used to the size. Um, I've got a range of monitors I've been using recently down here, they're between 23.6 inches and 27 inches. They're completely dwarfed by this screen, it is huge and that's something that some people will really like. I like it. It, uh, you know, it makes for a very engrossing gaming experience. Um, and I find it just fine on the desktop as well. Um, it engages the peripheral vision well for gaming. Obviously that's not exactly a great thing on the desktop, but I don't find that um, for my viewing position, you know, about 80 centimeters at most from the screen, I don't find that I'm having to move my head around or injure my neck or anything like that. You know, um, your eyeballs have um, they're perfectly capable of swivelling in the sockets without you having to move your head. It's the, the wonders of uh, the human body. So you don't have to move your head all around. That's complete rubbish. Uh, so I, I like the screen size. Um, I could see from a competitive point of view, this isn't, you know, this isn't a competitive monitor. It's not a, really meant as a gaming monitor. I can see how you could have a competitive advantage by going for a smaller screen or obviously one with higher refresh rate, one that's more responsive, that's fair enough. But the experience this delivers with the resolution, the, the big screen, you know, it's, it's an immersive experience and it's, uh, it's really quite enjoyable. And, you know, I, I commend their choice of screen surface, glossy, just like the last model. There aren't enough glossy screen surfaces on the market these days. Some people do prefer them, I prefer them. Um, you know, I don't mind sort of some of the lower haze matte screen surfaces, but to be honest, the I'm really quite sensitive to grainy looking screen surfaces. I really hate them. So it's kind of nice to have a nice smooth display, especially at this resolution. The the resolution itself, um, I suppose I didn't really, I, I mentioned it more in the written review, but the pixel density when you're gaming, it's um, it doesn't give you the same kind of wow factor that you get from smaller screens of the same resolution because the pixel density isn't as good. But really, it's it's quite similar to what you'd see on a 27-inch WQHD or 2560 by 1440 display, and you don't hear too many people complaining about them saying, "Oh, you know, the lack of detail or anything like that." Um, you know, it's actually pretty decent. And to have it spread out across this big glossy screen, it's uh, it's pretty impressive in some ways, really. At the moment, it's the only monitor on the market um, that's anything like this. There is the uh, Dell have a uh, P4317Q, I believe it is. That's more of a business-to-business -business product. It's a higher price than this. I'm not sure if it's actually going to be available at the normal retailer channels. I'm not sure it may be available on Dell.com at the moment, or it will be shortly. That has a fully adjustable stand. Um, I haven't tested it myself, so I can't really compare it to this. But this is a lower priced alternative, which is more meant for the mainstream home slash business user. The, um, the stand, I should mention, um, I did show you there's a Vesa holes at the other side, or Vesa holes, whatever you want to call them. So you can mount it however you want, but the included stand 
It's actually quite solid. It's uh, the, the last model, the BDM4065, it had a bit more wobble to it. This one is, is remarkably solid with the included little stand feet there. So that's quite quite decent, but obviously you can't tilt the monitor, you can't adjust its height or anything like that. But, I mean, I find it fairly decent to use just on the desk as it is. You can mount it in any way you want, though, as long as it's VESA compatible. So, just to reiterate, what you've seen on the video review, it's something that's influenced by my camera and your own monitor. It's not a good representation of what you'll see on the monitor first hand, but hopefully this has given you a bit more of an insight or a sort of brief overview of the monitor. It, um, again, it's just designed to complement the written review. I highly recommend that you read the written review if you're interested in purchasing this monitor. And if you are, please do uh, think about using our, our links at the bottom of the review to help support the work that we do. A link to the written review is included in the description of this video. I'm sure many of you will be aware of my website pcmonitors.info but if not be sure to check out that, it's got plenty of good information um, beyond just this monitor. I hope you enjoyed the video, if not do let me know, if you did do let me know, you know if, if people don't like this kind of thing I'm quite happy to just stop here and not make any more videos to waste your time. So. Uh, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.